Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty. And today we're going to be talking about the Chantecaille Black Friday sale. So the Black Friday sale is going to open to the public on November 25th, but there's early access through several YouTubers. I'm going to be one of them this year. And that starts Friday the 19th. So the code for early access is Lexi25. It's L-E-X-I-2-5. And that's gonna give you 25% off on the Chantecaille website. However, there are some exclusions. So let's go through those exclusions real quickly. It's excluding all new arrivals, the philanthropy collections, the biolifting massage tool, cotton pads, hand sanitizer, the pebble compacts, pencil sharpener, and e-gift cards. So unfortunately, the holiday collection then as a new arrival is going to be excluded as well as the new iBase, but there are quite a few products that I would recommend that are included in the sale. So today we're going to be going through what I would recommend that is on sale. These are not all of my Chantecaille recommendations because obviously the philanthropy collection has a lot of my favorites and those are excluded. So we're gonna go through what I would recommend from what's on sale, and I have all of this put into my shop list along with the shades and things that I've used and that I have. So let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start off with brushes that I recommend from Chantecaille, and I have not tried all of their brushes. And by the way, all of these items I'm featuring here today are all, um, none of these were gifted. These were all purchased by me. So, Brushes that I really like from Chantecaille. Let's start off with the Buff and Blur brush. They do have a travel size of this now with a shorter handle. Unfortunately, that is out of stock, but it is the same size head. This Buff and Blur brush is a fantastic synthetic alternative to the face one from Sonia G, which is, you know, now called the, uh, what is it? I think it's the Buffer Pro. And it's also a great alternative to the Westman Atelier blender brush. Let me show you those. All right, this is the Westman Atelier versus the Chantecaille. You can see here that the heads of these are essentially the same. One of the differences is that the Chantecaille is actually a little more densely packed. So you can see there's not quite as much movement as there is with the Westman Atelier. These are both synthetic and this is the height difference. Now my, my uh, face one must be being dried right now. So this is the new Buffer Pro. So this one is not bloomed yet. I haven't washed it or used it. Obviously just took out of the plastic. But once this is bloomed, at least on my face one, the diameter of the face is the same. I'm, I haven't compared the new Buffer Pro to it yet, but they should be approximately the same, although this does seem a little bit smaller um, just from my recollection. So we'll, we'll see about that. But you can see here that this is still going to be, it's more densely packed at least than this new Buffer Pro. You can see the difference here. And again, this is going to be goat versus synthetic. Next, we have the Sculpt Brush. Now, the Sculpt Brush, I actually really like this for cream products. That's primarily what I use it for, but you can use it for like contour and things like that. I've also used it for face masks, uh, applying those. They do have a foundation and mask brush, which I have. I just honestly always reach for this over that. So I, I don't really, I haven't used it much. <laughs> um, but this one you can see is angled and I really like this one particularly for cream, bronzer, or contour products, especially something I'm putting on underneath foundation. I like to smear it on with this and then go over with foundation. And sometimes I'll use the same brush here for foundation as well. And again, all of these brushes are synthetic, they're vegan, and so forth. And then I have two eye brushes that I would recommend. This one here is the Eye Blend Brush. This is one of my favorite brushes. Uh, you know, like not just in the synthetic category, this is one of my favorite brushes. <laughs> you can see that, you know, it's, it's a cute little like blending brush essentially. But what I like this for is smudging under the eyes, smudging out liners or cream shadows. If you're working with like a cream shadow that you want to smudge out carefully, this is great for that. It's very soft. So 
that's why I like this. I actually have two of these because I use this one so much. I really like this one. The other brush that I really like is the Shade and Sweep. And I have used these in the demo that I will share with you at the end of the video today. So the Shade and Sweep is just a nice like soft shader style brush. This again can be used wet or dry, you know, any types of products. I, this originally came out for the luminescent eye shades, which I do use it for that. But really I love this particularly with cream products such as the mermaid eyeshadows. So let's go ahead and move into skincare before we start talking more about the makeup. But skincare, I don't use a ton of Chantecaille skincare. I have not tried everything in their line, um, but there are some things from them that I have used and really loved. So, so moving into skincare, I really like the lip potion from Chantecaille. This is their lip balm. And I've actually used mine all up, so I don't have one to show you right now, but it comes in this cute little gray hinged pot and it is a creamy, almost moussey type of texture. It's almost whipped and it's a light pearly pink. And I really like wearing that, um, you know, particularly during the day. During the night, I usually like to use something a little heavier duty overnight, but during the daytime, that is a fantastic lip balm. I really like it. I find it very comfortable and nice to use on the lips. And yeah, it's, it's one that I, I would definitely repurchase. I also really like the Chantecaille Cleansing Balm. I would recommend picking that up on sale. So I, I do think it is a pretty expensive product for the amount you get. However, on sale, I think it is worth it because I have not found another cleansing balm that has this type of texture. So a lot of cleansing balms are either like oily or maybe a dryer cream or something. This really feels like a moisturizer that you're rubbing in and it takes everything off. So it's one of the best performing cleansing balms that I've used. I really do like that one. So I would recommend picking that one up on sale. And then here we have um, some masks. I have quite a few Chantecaille masks. I have to admit, I don't have any of the pricier ones like the gold ones and so forth. But I have some solid favorites from these. So this is the Detox Clay Mask. And you can see it's kind of like a slate blue. And this, you know, it, it has a typical clay mask scent. It smells like Kaylin. But one of the great things about this mask here is that it doesn't dry. A lot of times when you use a clay mask, it's going to dry on your skin and it cracks and then you get those little pieces falling all over. This doesn't. It stays moist on your face so you don't have that cracking sensation. And I use this anytime my skin's starting to feel like decongested or I'm starting to get breakouts. Uh, so I use it more often during the summer when that's more of an issue for me during the, than during the rest of the year. But it's one that I always have on hand. It is my favorite clay mask from any brand that I have used personally. And then I didn't bring up these other two masks, but I did want to mention them. The Jasmine and Lily Healing Mask. That's like a great all-purpose moisturizing mask. You can wear it like overnight and sleep in it and so forth. And I do that, um, you know, it's a great like hydration boost. So I really like that if my skin's feeling like a little sensitive or something, I'll put that one on. And then the Hibiscus Mask is also one of my favorites. And that's one of those ones that has, I, I have to double check, like I know, I think it has BHAs and HAs. I can't remember if they're both in there, but it is like a brightening exfoliating mask using acids. And I think it's a really nice mask when you need a little bit of a brightening lift. And again, that's another one that has more of that moisturizer uh, texture to it. You can wear it overnight and wake up to brighter skin. So uh, that's kind of what I do, both the Jasmine and Lily and the Hibiscus, when I use those, I do typically put on like a lighter layer and leave it on overnight. And I use that in place of my nighttime moisturizer. Another product that I really like that I don't have is the Stress Repair Concentrate. 
and I am, you know, I'm probably gonna pick that one up, but I like that for under the eyes, around the lips. It's meant to be used anywhere that you have signs of stress. So any like the 11s and so forth, you can use it there. I honestly, I haven't tried it. I have not purchased a full size of that yet. I've only used like lots of deluxe size samples and things and travel sizes, uh, but I do really like that one. And the Rose de May face oil is another one that I like. That is, it's a nice light oil. I typically only use it during the winter. And you know, I've heard a few different ways of using this. Some people put this on underneath their moisturizer. Some people put it on on top of the moisturizer. And some people mix a few drops into it. So for me, you know, I've done all three ways <laughs> and I, I don't have a particular favorite, but yes, I do like to use that oil. For me, it's something that I use more often during the winter and when, when I feel like my skin needs more oil. And then the last skincare item I wanted to mention is the rose water. I particularly like the travel size bottle. So I have a larger bottle and I decant some into this bottle. And this is, you can see it's, it's refillable and it just has like a nice mist so here i will try to mist it you can see that it's like it's fine but you're getting a lot of product it's it's not going to be one of those super super fine mists that you don't feel water droplets you do but i particularly really like this and it's a glass bottle that i've dropped down the stairs several times and it has never chipped so i i mean that's fantastic. So I, I always put my rose water into the little travel size bottle. So I would definitely recommend that because so far it's been unbreakable for me and it is a special type of glass. So it is supposed to be more resistant to breakage. All right. So let's talk about makeup. We're going to start off with base products. Now the cushion foundation is excluded from the sale. But other base products that I would recommend, we have the Real Skin Stick. This is one of those all-over concealer sticks. I wear shade 0W, and I, I like this product. I think this is a nice product. So here's the 0W shade. You can see that it is creamy enough to blend out. You can build this up to get more coverage, but I would say in general, you're going to get like medium coverage. And other base products, I particularly like the Future Skin Gel Foundation. This is one of those products that's kind of weird. So when you get it and you start applying it, if you apply it like a regular foundation, you're kind of like, oh, this gives no coverage. Why would I buy this? But it's really all in how you put it on. And it's actually a really great foundation if you put it on the right way. So the first few times that I used this, I you know, basically ended up putting it on and brushing it in and couldn't see anything. So I found for me, my favorite way is more of a pouncing method. This has a moisturizer texture to it, very lightweight, and it really tends to sink into the skin. So I have the shade Porcelain. I actually also have Alabaster, but Porcelain is my shade. Um, they only make Porcelain in this particular formula. So I'll mix the mask, mask in there, but you can see what the texture is like on that. The other base product I wanted to mention is the Just Skin. And this actually has a little bit more coverage for me, even though it's technically the tinted moisturizer. I have the shade Alabaster, but this summer they came out with a new shade. Um, they came out with Aura. So Aura, for those of you who are familiar with the lighter Chantecaille shades, Aura is that really light um, foundation shade. It's lighter than porcelain. So honestly, I'd be a mix of porcelain and alabaster, or porcelain and, sorry, alabaster and Aura to create porcelain. And yeah, so I haven't picked that up yet, but you can see how much deeper alabaster is. This is also gonna be a thicker texture than the Future Skin Gel. And this gives me a little bit more coverage. It's a little bit easier to get the, the coverage from the Just Skin than the Future Skin Gel. And then I really always recommend the uh, Le Camouflage Stilo from Chantecaille. I love the formula on this. This one's actually about empty. So um, this is going to be shade one, the light shade. Let's see if I can get any out. 
The only issue with this is that the applicator itself isn't, um, it's one of those ones where sometimes you have to click and click and click for like 20 times to get the product. Um, but I really like the product. Unfortunately, it's almost empty. So it's probably about as much as I can get. You can see that it's going to be brightening. It has a little sheen to it. It has a nice lightweight texture. It's moisturizing. And if you're applying this, I would recommend putting like dabbing it on where, where you want it, essentially. Don't rub it in yet. Then, you know, wait a minute or so. Do something else with your makeup and let that sit and then rub it in. And I think you get a little bit more coverage there and it looks very smooth. And this is a really great product. Moving on to powders. This is the Chantecai Talc Free Loose Powder. And I think it did come with a big puff. I always remove those, so I don't remember, but I just take what's in the lid here on a fluffy brush and buff this in. This is a nice basic uh, setting powder and it comes in a couple shades. I, this one here is light, but it's just a really nice basic loose powder. So now other powders, this is the HD Perfecting Powder. And this is going to be the shade light and you can see that it's going to be like a white translucent powder. It's not quite white, it's more of like an ivory white, but it is light. It does have another shade in the range as well. And then it's, for me, that's a really great product because it gives that blurring effect, but it's not too dark. Whereas this is a perfect blur powder, which now comes in two shades and it is now available in a compact that looks like this, the gunmetal um, pebble. So this is the perfect blur next to it. And you can see how much warmer this is, how much peachier it is. This one's actually a little bit too dark for me. I have to be very careful putting that on. I like using this one tapped under my eyes. So I can just take a little bit, uh, just take a little bit on my finger and tap it underneath and get some blur here. And the peachiness works for a little color correction, but for all over my face it's just a little bit too peachy so i tend to lean towards the hd perfecting powder which uh it is similar you know they're not exactly the same but they are similar formulas and they both give a blurring effect um i find that this gives a really nice soft focus it, it almost looks like a filter and you'll see this in the demo all right, let's move on to eyeliners because Chantecaille eyeliners are some of my absolute favorite formulas. This is a brightening eye cudgel in nude and we're gonna swatch these on my hand here. So here's nude, can you see it down by my pinky? And they now came out with a new cudgel in black, a smoky one. Uh, I haven't tried that one yet, but I do have all of the Luster Glide eyeliners. So I actually have the Silk Infused formula. They recently, just this year, they changed them out so that they removed the silk and they are now a vegan uh, eyeliner. So they're Luster Glide eyeliners. I have Luster Glide Silk Infused eyeliners, but I do have all of the shades. So let's start swatching. This one here is Amethyst. And sorry, I'm not as good at swatching on, <laughs> on onto my right hand. So that's amethyst. You can see that this one is going to be one of the more like reddish violet shades. So it's really beautiful. It goes very well with like pangolin if you have that. One of my all-time favorites though is violet damask, which is cooler. It's more of a blue tone violet. And it's really pretty. So we'll use this one in the demo today so you can see that one. And one of the reasons I really love these eyeliners is you can see how creamy these are going onto my my skin. This one here is Earth. Let me put a better swatch there. And this one's just the brown, um, but it goes on very nicely and they're very creamy, but after a few minutes they do set. So I can actually use these oh, must have broke my, my pencil point. Hold on one second. All right, so I actually remember breaking this point now. Um, this one here is the shade Black Forest, and it's a really pretty like hunter green, but you can see that it's more of like a spruce green. There is a little blue in there. And if you're interested in all of my favorite eyeliners, I have a blog post on atlb.lux, atlb.luxe where I went through all of my uh, favorite eyeliners and that's when I broke the point when I was watching this. 
So this one here, Slate, which is a nice charcoal gray. You can see there's a little bit of shimmer to it, but it's very, very subtle. There's a little sheen to it. There kind of is with all of these, but it's more noticeable with certain shades than others. So I just think this is a gorgeous, gorgeous gray. Um, but it's, it's a deep gray it's more charcoal. Next to it, we have Raven. And I apologize. I do have a little bit of the remainder of a scab, um, next to that there, but this is Raven. This is going to be the true black shade and it's pretty inky black. I'm quite curious to see how the new smoky cudgel compares to that because I find this one to be pretty black. My all time favorite is Olive Brocade and look at that. You see that shimmer? So you've got this beautiful olive green, khaki green with gold sparkle in it. This is the only one that you actually see sparkle in. So I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And then the last one here is Jasper, which is actually um, my most recent acquisition out of these. But this is going to be a brown. You can see compared to Earth, it's going to be warmer. Let me put those next to each other. All right, so here's Jasper and here's Earth. Jasper actually has a little bit more red in it. And it's also, it's got a little bit more of a sheen, a little bit of shimmer compared to Earth, which is pretty matte. Next, let's take a look at the Mermaid eyeshadows. And there are two formulas. We've got the Mermaid Eye Matte, and I only have one of these. This is the shade Olivia. You can see what the texture is like. It's kind of like one of those drier putty type creams. So this is Olivia, which is a gray, but it has a brown base to it. So it's really more of a taupe, depending on you know how you wanna blend this out. If you really pile it up, you're gonna see more of a warm, soft gray. But if you blend it out more, you'll see a little bit more taupe. And then we also have Triton, which is one of the shimmer shades. This one's actually kind of similar to Olivia here. Right. You can see that it's the shimmer version essentially of Olivia, but because of the way that this formula performs when you're putting it on, you're going to see a little bit more of that brown base when you blend that out. And it's a little bit of a brighter silver when it's built up. I, I really love this. This is my favorite one of the mermaid eyeshadows. And then we also have hematite here, which is a really pretty purple. This one, I mean, um, mine is just a little bit more, it's a little drier than my Triton, and, but it performs fine on the eyes. But if I'm lining the eyes with it, I do have to be careful for a little fallout with that, oops. And then we also have Seashell. And Seashell is more of a golden like champagne shade. So those are the ones that I have, and they've got some other shades. And some of these are in stock, some of them aren't. I honestly can't remember which shades are available at this moment, but I do have everything listed on the shop list page. Moving on, other eyeshadows that I would recommend from Chantecai. Um, you know, I do have some of their refill eye shades, but what I'm recommending is actually the Chrome Lux duos. They only have one duo available right now, and that's this one here, which is San Piazza Marco. And I really like this one. I actually like all of the ones that I have. But in all of the duos, you have a deep shade and a lighter, more complimentary shade. And you can see that these are, you know, they look more purple online, but they're really more of like, um, there's more gray in here. So there's a little, it's like a grayish purple, but there's more gray with a touch of purple. And the shimmery shade is more of a soft grayish purple as well. So I think it makes purple very wearable because I mean, look at it on my eyes. It actually does not look that purple. It's really mostly gray. So it's like, you know how when you look at like gray wall paint, sometimes it looks, you know, depending on what those undertones and base notes are, sometimes it can look purple. That's kind of what this eyeshadow does. And yeah, I, I really like this one. I think it's great. It goes really well with the slate eyeliner. I paired it with Violet Damask, I can pair it with any color, but I think it's really a, a nice product. All of these Chrome Luxe duos are some of my absolute favorite formulas from Chantecai, and I really hope that they bring more shades of this out and bring back the uh, Marrakesh one. I can't think of what the full name is, but uh, yeah. 
I missed that one. Really want Gardens of Marrakesh. That was it. Really pretty. It was like a green and a purple. I wish I had that. <laughs> Moving on to cheek products, we have the Chantecaille Cheek Gelée. And I particularly like the shade Vibrant. So you can see that, I mean, I, I bought this when this first came out. And what is that, like two, two or three years ago? So these last. Um, but you can smudge this out. I do have another one in the shade Happy, which is like a peachy shade. Let me show you that one as well. So here's Happy. Um, the only thing with Happy is that it is... First of all, it's got a pearly finish compared to Vibrant. Vibrant really doesn't look so pearly on the skin, but this one, it kind of blends away too easily. Um, it's like a peachy pink with like a pearly finish. So it's just not my particular favorite combination for my skin, but Vibrant I think is one that works for pretty much everybody because you can really sheer this out and get like a little bit of a flush or you can, you know, make it a little bit deeper. So they do have another shade. There's a fourth shade, which I didn't realize there were four shades. Um, so I don't have the other deeper shade, but I'm interested in potentially picking that one up sometime. And then we have the Shantakai bronzer and I have the shade Goa. Both shades look really dark. Goa is cooler. Serena looks warmer. It has more of a yellow base. Serena. Um, you can see Goa here has more of this like reddish base. They both look dark, but with a light hand, I can use it. So the formula for this, I actually think this formula is an amazing bronzer formula. I really love the formula. I do wish that they had a shade a little bit lighter for me, so I didn't have to be quite so cautious. But um, the actual formula is a gel powder formula. It's very smooth, blends beautifully, and it's a really nice finish. So I really do like the Chantecaille bronzers and I think they're bringing out more shades sometimes. I know it, they, they had plans on bringing out more shades, but then COVID kind of disrupted some of those plans. So hopefully next summer, I don't know. I haven't heard anything. <laughs> and then we have the highlighter in Eclat Beyond. First of all, look at this packaging. I mean, you can see you've got this like lucite lid. You've got the gold flakes embedded in there that are like three dimensional in here. And then you have this beautiful like fabric imprint on here. I have to use this sparingly. Look at that. I mean, that is stunning, but I love this highlighter and it's one that, I mean, you can't tell, but I've actually used it quite a bit. I just use it so, so little of it at a time, but this is it. It's a true gold. Feels like silk on your skin, like going on. You don't feel any sort of grittiness or glittery parts or anything. It's super finely milled. And it, I mean, you can make this a beaming golden disco light if you want, or you can put it on softly like I did and just get a little bit of light reflection. I think it's a fantastic highlighter. And I hope they bring back the powder that came out the same time that Eclat Dew, which is my all time favorite powder. All right, and let's talk about lips. So lips, I have a, uh, this is the lip liner in Nuance. The Chantecaille lip liners are kind of newer to me. I just recently started trying them. So this is Nuance and it's one of those pinky nudes, but it does lean warm, okay? You can see that it is, an, it's a warmer pink. So there's a little bit of like a reddish brown in there, um, like a little like clay type brown. So the formula of these, I think they're really nice. They're creamy yet dry, so they're not going to like smudge out anywhere. Anywhere They perform well and they're comfortable on the lips. So I do like them. I also have this one, which is the Lip Keep. Now this is just one of those translucent, I don't even know why I'm trying to swatch it. You can't, you can't see it, but it's a translucent like wax stick. And you know, I feel like all of these types of products are pretty similar across brands, but I think this is a nice one. I like the fact that you can sharpen it, whereas most of the time when you see these um, invisible pencils, they are usually in a retractable format because the wax is pretty soft. Um, so I actually, I like having it with an actual pencil form where I can sharpen it and get the point that I want. And then for lips, lip cheeks, I, there are lip cheek shades that I really like. 
My favorite formula though, um, the Lip Veils is not available. The Lip Cheeks were my favorite formula at one point, but the fragrance is not my my favorite. However, I do highly recommend this one, which is the Rose de May Lip Cheek. Lip Cheek. And this is the shade of it. It is limited edition packaging. I think it's stunning. I really like that one. And then I also have a couple of glosses. Before we move on though, I just want to um, share with you the Honeysuckle Lip Cheek. This is my most used lip cheek. It is my favorite. And I mean, look at that. It's just, it's this one up here. It's a beautiful like nude pink shade. I really like that. And I have it in the Hummingbird packaging, but they did recently put that in the fall collection, I believe as well. But, um, you know, you'd have to double check. I don't, I don't think it's going to apply. The discount applies to the fall collection, but I believe they are supposed to be putting it in permanent packaging as well. So I don't know. I haven't checked to see if that's there yet, but let's move on to the lip glosses. I have two of these right now. I'm just going to use my other hand to make it a little easier. And this one here is shade classic, which is a peachy shade. So it's like a warm peachy pink, more peach than pink. And then this one here, I believe uh, my name came off, but I believe this one's charm and it's very, very soft, almost translucent peach. And I use this one quite a bit. Oh no, it is charm. And the labels there is just with the light reflection, hard to see, but yes. So I use charm quite a bit to top off things and yeah, I really like the Shantake glosses. I think they aren't talked about enough. I think they're a really nice formula. So now I'm gonna go ahead and share with you the demo. But again, all of these items that I'm recommending here are included in my shop list page. So I have that linked down below and it's also on my actual shop list site. So feel free to check that out. If you have any questions or comments about it, definitely let me know down below in the comments. And if you are looking to use the early access code. Um, mine is Lexi25, L-E-X-I-2-5. And let's move on to the demo so you can see this makeup in action. All right, so we are gonna start off with base products. I have a little bit of the Dior Forever Skin Veil Primer on. We're going to start off with the Chantecai Eye Base. I always like to put eye base on at the same time as, or like primer, on at the same time as face primer and just kind of let it sit a little bit. So I just rub this in and, um, you know, smudge it with my finger. Now this product here is excluded from the sale. It's a new arrival. So unfortunately this won't be included, but I did just want to show it to you in case it's something that you are interested in. So you can see that it gives you know, a little bit of coverage to kind of help camouflage any lines and so forth. And yeah, I think it's, um, it's a nice product. Next, we're going to move on to the Real Skin Plus Stick. So this is one of those like all over like concealer type products. And I, you know, during the summer, I will use this kind of, you know, for spot concealing on my face. This is shade 0W. And I also like to use this more as a stick concealer under my eyes. And it has, you know, one of those like putty-like consistencies. You can see that it's going to provide some coverage. And you know what? We're going to go light on the foundation. So we're gonna add just a little bit of this here. Let's try this brush. This is, I actually have not used it with this product before, but this is the Sculpt brush, which is something I use with uh, cream bronzers typically. And yeah, so just getting a little bit of coverage because we're gonna go in with the Future Skin Foundation, which is not gonna be super high coverage or anything. All right, so just a little coverage of my redness. And my nose is a little red because I am freezing today. It is very, very cold. But we're going to go in with the Future Skin. And this is a shade Porcelain, which 
is my perfect shade in the Chantecaille found foundations, but unfortunately they only make it in Future Skin. Um, the Future Skin Gel, sorry, not the not the uh, cushion. So this is a Coyoto F04 brush, one of the you know former Fupa brushes. And yeah, so with this, it feels more like a moisturizer. You can see it's kind of got like a light, not quite whipped, but it is like a lighter texture. And it feels more like a hydrating moisturizer that kind of just blends and sinks into your skin. So for me, I like kind of more pouncing this in. I don't like to use like sponges, um, but if you are a sponge person, I think this works very, very well with a sponge or a beauty blender, you know, anything of that type. So it's just a, it's a nice product. All right, so next we're going into the Chantecaille Cheek Gelée. And my favorite shade in this is Vibrant, although I just recently noticed the, um, I forget what the name of the shade is. There's another one that's like a deep, like, um, I forget what it's called, but I'll put that on the screen. That one looks really pretty. I kind of want to try that one. Uh, but I do think like the one in Happy, which is like a light peach, that one's just a little bit too light. Like you really have to put a bunch on to really see it. So I'm just dabbing a little bit of this on with my fingers. You can also use a brush. And I usually like to dab this on with my fingers and then I take my foundation brush and just kind of go over it lightly. So here's Vibrant. So I'm just gonna take the brush I use for foundation and I'm not really going over the whole thing, but the edges mostly, because I think it helps it like kind of blend out a little bit. Just look a little bit more natural. So just a little pouncing with that. All right, and next I'm going to kind of set all of this with some powder. This is actually the HD Perfecting Powder. And I don't see this one talked about very much, but this is a nice powder. It does have a blurring effect to it. It's similar to the Perfect Blur, but it comes in a lighter shade, which works well for me. So this is the uh, Buff and Blur brush. And I don't want to kind of, you know, smudge any of my blush or anything that I just put on. So I'm just kind of pouncing the powder in to kind of set it a little bit. But this brush in particular works really well for buffing things on and blending them out with powder products. But today I'm just going to pounce and you can see that this brush works well for that too. And look, you can see how kind of I have more of a softly filtered effect on my skin. So if you are somebody who has deeper skin than me, Perfect Blur can be a good match for you. So that's the one that originally came in the Hummingbird, then they came out in the Flower Power Packaging, and they had a, a darker shade as well. And now they have it in the regular packaging that's more like this, the little, um, I forget what they call it, the Pebble Compact in Gunmetal. But look at the difference in color here. If you are as fair as I am, then Honestly, I would go with the HD Perfecting Powder over the Perfect Blur. And you can use it for setting or for finishing, but I think it's a really nice product. Plus, this is 12 grams versus 8 grams in the Perfect Blur. And this also has two shades, but I don't remember what the darker shade looks like off the top of my head. Uh, but I think it's still on the lighter side. So depending on your skin tone, I would say, you know, take a look at both of these as options. Just keep in mind that this one is a little peachy. So depending on your undertones, that may or may not work as well. So this is the Chantecaille Bronzer in Goa. I'm going to use a fluffy brush. As you can see, this is deep. I don't want a lot of product on here. This is the Coyoto um, Akabeko brush. So I just put a little powder on here. This is like a, a gel powder formula and it's a really great formula. It comes in two shades. I chose this one because it's cooler in tone, 
but Serena, the other shade, is a little bit warmer. And these shades, I mean, as dark as they look, they actually work really well for lighter skin tones as well because you can just go in with less product. You can see it still works for me. It's a little bit deeper than what I wear most of the time, but during the summer, it is one that I can do. And honestly, if I make it a little bit too deep, I just go back in with the powder and can use this powder or one of the others. Honestly, my favorite powder is no longer at Chantakai. That is the A Claude Dew. If you find that at another retailer, I would definitely pick it up. It was limited edition. I don't know if it's coming back or something similar will be, but I'm hopeful. Uh, that one is my absolute favorite finishing powder, and that's typically what I would use if I want to go ahead and blend something out. This one's a little bit firmer, a little less powdery and velvety, so I use it more for setting than finishing typically. So we might as well just finish up on the cheeks. This is the A Claude Briant. So when the A Claude Dew, the powder I was talking about, came out, this was the highlighter that came out at the same time. You can see it's a bright yellow gold. I need to go in with a light hand with this. So I like this brush or any sort of fluffy fan brush works well. This is the Koyoto Premium Series fan brush. And that way I can just get a little dusting of the gold and get that sparkle. The denser the brush, the more product you're gonna get. But I also really like the Refer fan brush for this, which I forget what number that is, maybe 20. And also the Fan Pro from Sonia G is another one that I like. But this one's my, this one and the Refer are my favorite just because they're a little bit fluffier, so I get even less product. The Sonia G one's a little bit denser. It's just small and compact enough that I can be careful with. So those are kind of my favorite brushes for application of something that's this pigmented as a highlighter for me. And I think this highlighter is just gorgeous on deeper skin tones. I'm like it's seriously one of the best i think so we're going to move on to eyes and i'm going to take one of the mermaid eye mattes this is the shade olivia and i'm going to use this kind of as a base so i'm using the shade and sweet brush and i'm going to put this primarily in the crease but you can see that i'm turning the brush so i can get slightly above the crease as well so this is not going to be my primary lid color but just putting a little bit of this on because I do want this in the crease area to show through. So the mermaid eyeshadows, they've got matte and then they have shimmers. I really like these. They are kind of like one of those like drier putty like cream shadows and they perform really well. They've got several nice shades and yeah, Olivia is the only matte one I have, but I do have several of the shimmers and I really like them. But some of my absolute favorite shadows from Chantecaille are the Chrome Luxe Duos. Now, unfortunately, they only have one shade set left in stock right now. And that's this one, the Piazza San Marco, which, you know, is one that I really, really like. So I'm going into the deepest shade with the shade and sweep. I'm just going to go ahead and pat this on. And then I'm going to go into the lighter shade here. Now I love these duos because the, first of all, they've got some gorgeous color combinations, but they are such a beautiful like metallic shadow. The formula is very silky, very, very finely milled. And you can use these wet or dry, but you can see that even using them dry, they have kind of this like liquid metal kind of appearance. And then for the lower lash line, I'm going to do the lighter shade down here, the darker shade over here. This is the Chantecaille Eye Blend Brush. And I love this brush because it's soft. It's easy to use, and if you want kind of like a thicker um, swatch of color, like under on the lower lashes, or let's say you are using like a liner and you want to smudge it out, I think this is like the best brush for it. I actually bought two of these because I love this brush so much. Okay, and for the upper lash line, we're going to take one of the eyeliners. This is in the shade Violet Damask, 
And this is one of my favorites. It's a blue violet. And I love the formula of these. They are incredibly creamy, like an eye cajol or cream or coal. And I'm um, just going to soften that with the eye blend brush. But these actually do stay put for me. And they are some of my absolute favorite eyeliners, particularly the shade Olive Brocade, which I have talked about so many times on this channel because it's a gorgeous like olive green with gold sparkle and it's my all-time favorite eyeliner. Now I don't often line the waterline and so forth. Uh, no, I don't often line my waterline, but when I do, if I want some brightening, I really like this brightening eye cudgel. So it only comes in one shade, nude, but they do have a new smoky eye cudgel in black. Um, but I don't have that yet. So you can see, I mean, you can use this in the inner corner just for a little added brightening. It's very subtle, but one of the great things about this versus like a white pencil is that there's a little like creaminess to this. It looks a little bit more natural than something bright white and still gives you some brightening there. So I really like this. This is a staple for me. And let's go ahead and look at the brows. So this is the brow gel and it's, you know, one of those liquid like brow tint type things and just kind of spread this in and there we go. So this comes in a few different shades. And if you're looking for just like a little tint, this works. So this one is the light shade. And now for lashes, I'm going to use one of my already open mascaras. So it's not going to be a Shantakai one right now. So we're going to go ahead and move on to lips. We're going to use the lip definer in Nuance. And this is one of Chantecaille's lip liners. They have these in a lot of colors, but they also have one called the Lip Keep, which is one of those, um, you know, translucent wax ones. And I have that. And that one is, is nice. I feel like, you know, that type of product is pretty much the same everywhere. All right, so I'm just gonna line the lips with that. And then the actual lip keep, you can see it's, it says it's invisible and this is it. So I think it's a, it's a nice one of the universal lip liners. I've had, you know, I've had this for oh, a couple of years now, still working well. And then for lips, we're going to use the Chantecaille and John Darien Lip Chic. And this is a limited edition one with limited edition packaging and so forth. But I believe this one is included in the sale. So this lip shake formula, I really like the formula. I love the way it feels on my lips, the amount of shine and everything that I get from it. This is one of the limited edition shades. The only reason that these are not like high up on my list of recommendations is just because I'm personally not a fan of the particular fragrance that they have in here now. It's a vanilla fragrance, but for some reason, the particular combination um, just is not my favorite. So I prefer the lip veils, but unfortunately they are a philanthropy product, so they are excluded from the sale. So while I do, there are definitely lip chic shades that I really, really love, particularly uh, like, what is it? Uh, honeysuckle, that one's my favorite. But this one here in the limited edition packaging and everything, I feel like this is such a great shade. I actually use this shade quite a bit and I love the actual packaging on this. It's just really beautiful. So I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions on the products or the sale or any anything that I could help you with. So again, the sale code is LEXI25 
and that's going to be good from November 19th through November 24th. After that, the sale opens to the public. Usually things go fairly quickly when they're on sale. So, you know, if there's something you want, I would shop more towards the beginning of the sale versus the end of the sale, just because once it opens to the public, there's usually, it's usually slim pickings. So again, just to reiterate the sale details, with the code LEXI25, you get 25% off, but the exclusions are new arrivals, philanthropy collections, the biolifting massage tool, cotton pads, hand sanitizer, the pebble compact, pencil sharpener, and e-gift cards. So hopefully this video helped you kind of figure out what actually does apply in the sale and what you might be interested in. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day and happy shopping.